and welcome to the Sprint 139 review. Uh, as usual, the speaker lineup is uh, me giving the overview, Harpreet giving, uh, uh, updating us on the UI, Adam on the providers, Jovi on the platform, and Alberto on the API. So uh, this Sprint, we had uh, uh, a downward rate here in the number of uh, pull requests both opened and merged um, while the uh, uh, PR still open is in a steady state uh, the uh, in terms of bugs versus enhancements we're at about a 50 50 clip here as we're uh, Stabilizing Yansa. Oops. And then uh, finally, the this is the health chart of all the uh, major repositories that we have. Um, again, still working on a on a graph to kind of show us uh, how it changes over time. And with that, I turn it over to Harpreet. Thanks, Oleg. Hello, everyone. A um, total of 41 UIPRs were merged this sprint. Out of that, 13 were bug fixes and 11 enhancements. A bunch of cleanup PRs. Some of the main, main bug and enhancements are highlighted here. So next slide, please. Changes were made to direct links in chargeback area to simplify the direct links that were added in previous sprints. Latest PRs changed those links to use standard Rails routes for add, edit, delete kind of features and simplified some of them. There are some examples below to go over. So next slide, please. On the catalog item editor, tenants tree, tenants tree was updated to support partial and full selection of child nodes in the tree. Previously, user had to click on each node to select them individually, which was an issue if you had a lot of tenants in the tree. So that was fixed. And um, next slide. On the new navig navigation menu bar, users' initials were replaced with the user avatar icon, and group icon color was updated for better visibility. You can see the before and after screenshots here. Next slide, please. Validation on Ansible repository form was updated to allow file protocol URLs with three slashes. Before and after screenshots are provided here to show different types of validations and related error messages. And that is all I have for the UI. All right, uh, so for providers, it was mostly just bug fixes this sprint. Um, on the Amazon side, Dan added a link between a cloud network and a router before you could just get from routers to networks through something else, but now we have a direct link between the two, which is nice. And we also added the new uh, Milan EU South region on Amazon. Uh, for Azure, we changed the value of what UID EMS was to be the Azure VM ID attribute. Um, we're still primarily using the EMS ref for uh, unique identification, but some customer would like um, was looking to have the VM ID uh, available. Uh, so we, we added that. Uh, Google, we fixed instance provisioning for a while, um, ever since they added the, uh, the network tier property of a network, which was a required attribute. Uh, when you provisioned a Google instance, it wasn't getting an external IP address automatically assigned. Um, so we had to uh, select a network tier uh, automatically uh, so that it would get automatically assigned. Next slide. Uh, on OpenShift, we saved the cluster version and the cluster ID. Uh, so this helps us be able to differentiate between version three and version four clusters. Uh, so those properties are set to the API version and the uh, UID EMS on the EXT management record for OpenShift. On Overt, uh, Dan added a couple of PRs to collect the VM CPU affinity. This is uh, uh, property which allows you to specify which specific host CPUs you want your your overt VMs uh, CPUs to run on. 
Um, so this is uh, actually a little bit of an extension of what VMware had. VMware, you just picked which guest CPU numbers uh, on over. You actually can pick one to one, like I want this CPU on this host, this VM on this host. So we'd update the format a little bit, but it's still compatible. Uh, it's a comma separated list. Um, so you'd be able to see that on UI now. Uh, for VMware, we collect uh, DNS and route information. So this is something where if you have guest tools installed on the VM, VMware will pull back some of the uh, DNS server and, and routing table information. So before, the only way that we would get this is with smart state. Now we're reading the, some additional guest tools properties and populating it in the network, uh, in the network record. And we also fixed parsing of custom attributes. Um, when we switched over to our VVMOMI, these were objects as opposed to hashes, and we were trying to access them like hashes. So it wasn't blowing up, it was just returning nil, and so the custom attributes weren't getting saved. So that's fixed now. And that's it for providers. Over to Joe. As long as I can find the mute off button. Sorry about that. So this sprint, there were a total of 24, uh, 42 PRs merged across the, the platform's uh, repos. And the highlights of which are, starting with enhancements, Alberto has enhanced the self-service UI to support being configured with OpenID Connect authentication. Big win. Mixi contributed an enhancement that will allow the user to specify image tags digests from the work, for the worker images. And he made another, so PostgreSQL and memcache parameters in the custom resource will now cause the operator to make the appropriate changes on the cluster. For bugs, a change was contributed to handle a missing Kafka secret. The system D support is now completely disabled on the Podified environments, but um, a bug was fixed where project compliance check was missing from container project compliance creation. And to avoid unnecessary resource, resource consumption, a flag has been added uh, to gate the deployment of Kafka and Zookeeper on Kubernetes. And lastly, I thought it would be worth listing the work done in the build space for those interested. And I won't talk about all these, but on this sprint, there were multiple PRs contributed to continue the work, especially with the RPM build. And that's it for the platform space. And on to Alberto. Thanks, Joe. So for the API, we had uh, a couple of enhancements that came in, one by uh, Yuri, uh, where we've uh, enhanced the messages that come back when uh, you know, we uh, uh, assign assign tags to resources. Here you can see in bold, uh, so be beyond the failure message, you, you actually get the, the reason why. So it's kind of helpful with that. Uh, next slide. And we've enhanced the uh, product info endpoint so that we now return the currently configured authentication of the appliance shown here in, in bold. And this is kind of important for things like the self-service UI or any other SPAs that need to know uh, unauthenticated the, the type of authentication so that they can drive um, you know, login screen and other logics related to that. And that's it for the APIs. Next slide. All righty. And that brings us to a close of the uh, Sprint 139 review. Thank you to all the presenters and thank you to all the contributors and the rest of the community for making this happen. And we'll see you in two weeks on the 8th of July.